At that time, um, inflation in Germany was such that with a little bit of, quote, hard currencies like francs, uh, you could live like a king in Germany. And it was a lot cheaper for people like my mother to uh, have a child uh, in Germany. She also had some other Russian friends who did the same thing. And Wiesbaden still today has a very active and ongoing Russian Orthodox cathedral or church. About a year later, I came to France with my mother uh, and my grandmother and grandfather stayed in Paris. So we rejoined them and we lived together from, well, I guess, 1923, 20, 24, until uh, 19, about 32, 33. They were, they were scattered all over because you had some people, let, let's say, of the nobility groups that came out and they seemed to find jobs and uh, live well and so on. Then there was another group who were the more, uh, who had less money and came out the hard way, uh, walking or thumbing or riding freight cars and so on. And they settled in an area of Paris called Clamart. And there was quite a bunch of them there. Um, by and large, we all met at the church at the Rue de Rue. Uh, many of the Russians became cab drivers in Paris. They all spoke good French, and, and they, some, even some of the nobility was uh, driving cabs for a living. I think, by and large, it was a very pleasant uh, stay. I always have good memories of Paris. As I grew up in Paris, uh, my grandmother used to take care of me. My mother got a very nice position at the Elizabeth Arden Salon in Paris. Uh, and uh, so she was bringing home the bacon, so to speak. And um, my grandfather, even though he was a good engineer, uh, he felt this was all beyond his dignity to go to work shoveling anything. <laughs> so, so we all lived in, a, in small apartments in Paris. It was a very enjoyable time for me, as I remember. Mother made many friends, both French and Russians. Uh, I was taken to the Russian Orthodox Cathedral in Paris. My grandfather had his gang of old generals and so on that he knew from back in Russia that came also to Paris um, by hook or by crook. And my grandmother was basically the one who raised me. She took care of me from the time my mother left until she got back from work and, and sometimes even later on. Uh, unfortunately, I could not find a photograph of me in a um, baby carriage with my grandmother pushing. But I do remember her well uh, taking me down to the banks of the Seine River in Paris and, and for walks and so forth daily. We used to go out somewhere. Uh, my first memories are really of that pension building, which is now a hotel, on Rue Clément Marot, just uh, parallel to Champs-Élysées by about two blocks. I don't remember the crib I was in, but eventually I had a bed somewhere in there. And by that time, my, by the time I remember things, uh, my father had already left the United States. Uh, thinking back, 
as you grow up, every day is a new day. Every day there's something new happening. And you don't regret yesterday because you've got something better coming today. And that seems to be universal. I mean, I've seen that in children virtually all over the world. Mainly it was his brother, older brother, Serge, who helped him along. Now, Serge had emigrated just a year or so before, and he, being in the diplomatic corps in Russia, knew a lot of people diplomatically, and he got himself a very interesting job uh, as a Russian prince uh, to be the purser on board transatlantic ships. He's told father, said, look, just come on over and then bring your family eventually. Well, he left in 19, shortly after I was born, about 1923, uh, 23, 24. Then he came back to, for a visit in 1927. He tried to persuade mother to come back, but we still, she still had her mother and father with us, and she felt tied down with them. So uh, and he couldn't quite afford to get all four of us over here. So uh, he went back. I, I'd say it was a long separation. Well, it came 1934, these obligations of her parents, me, and so forth have sort of vanished. And uh, then uh, she agreed to come. And uh, as the end of the story goes, uh, after she arrived, they lived happily ever after.